the van battery. That's the coach battery. There's a little switch over here. Right now it's on dual. That, uh, that's the alternator basically, charging normal. And then you parallel the coach battery to charge that. That's its idle. Looks like it's idling around 900, 800. Oil pump, oil pressure, I mean. Uh, oil temperature for, I think for the final drive. Um, let's see, daytime running lights. Nope, I'm sorry. That's the uh, cooling fan. And then uh, this is the daytime running lights. You can see it turns the headlights on, just the headlights only. Not the uh, tail lights or anything. Um, let's see up here we have the wipers. It's dry outside, of course. Uh, that's whatever. Um, cruise control, the multifunction headlight switch. That's parking, that's headlights, blinker. Uh, horn. <laughs> as far as horns go, here's an Ugo horn. <laughs> it's kind of fun. Um, stereo is pretty simple. Here now and 1037 Light FM. Want you? Uh, what else is there to show you up here? Uh, well, you've seen the buttons. Uh, this one turns on the rear heater. That uses uh, engine coolant in the rear to keep the cabin warm. That's the rear wiper. That's about it. Let's see, I just backed out really slowly. And I'm putting this thing in a drive. And going down the alley. She hasn't uh, warmed up yet at all. Shifted into first. Of course, it's still in first. But uh, on the highway at 55, this thing's probably revving around 4,000 in third gear. Uh, I believe the fastest I've had it up to is 75. Um, I believe its red line is probably oh somewhere around 5,500. I'm in front of a church here, taking some pictures of the unit. Still idling. Uh, these uh, has uh, side lights on each side <laughs> to uh, help when cornering or parking. It's been idling for just a little bit. Uh, I'm taking some pictures out in front of a church here. And it hasn't even warmed up enough to turn the cooling fans on. But with one hand, I'm going to put it in the drive and turn the vehicle around. The neat thing about this vehicle is that it's uh, small enough to fit into a single spot. It's still a little odd to maneuver, but if it had a reverse camera, it would be a lot easier to drive. Just so you could get a better feel for what's behind you. I'll show you what I mean in a second. All right. Turn around from the drivers. You have a blind spot. Uh, you can see out the back window, but you know, in all big vehicles, it's 
it takes a while to get used to driving something so big. <clears throat> That's what it sounds like in the rear while the engine's running. You hear the muffler purring. This is a feature that seemed kind of cheesy at first, but I, I grew to love it. Um, it has a clock, which keeps time even when it's off and the car's off. So it's always there and reliable. And it has a little alarm that you can set. And it wakes up with a with a klaxon, just me 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 something like that. Uh, I I like that a lot actually. <laughs> the uh, air conditioner is brand new. And it's in really, really good shape. It works really well. It's a low profile unit, and uh, it's, it has a separate motor for the outside blower fan. So it could be running inside, warm, uh, heating, or just moving air, and the outside is quiet. So that's pretty cool. The cooling fans finally kicked on. Yeah, it's two cooling fans in the front that are electric. When you're driving on the highway, they, they obviously don't run. And when you're idling, they'll just kick on and off. As you can hear, they just turned off. So this is the hood open. Uh, I've checked all the uh, vacuum hoses, all the belts, uh, timing belt, everything should be pretty strong. It's got a brand new battery. I just put that on about a month ago. Uh, everything's original. That's the uh, intake for the dash vent. The transmission shifts really, really strong. All in all, this is a very, very clean unit. I would show the running of the generator. I just started it. It's got a muffler built in underneath next to the uh, engine exhaust. This one's unique. Uh, it has electric fans to cool it. Those are 120 volt fans. There's another one right there. It has a fuel pressure regulator right there, and it's attached to an electric fuel pump on the, on the vehicle gas tank. So you don't have to mess with the secondary gas tank uh, or anything like that. It's uh, not the quietest of generators but it's also not the noisiest. Uh, it's 3,500 watts. We're inside now and there's a definite noise. There's the power converter. I believe this one's a 32 or 45 amp. It says right down there. Yeah, let's see. Turn on the air conditioner. It 
haven't run this all winter, so uh, you heard it low down when it first started up. But it's cooling now. Outside it doesn't sound any different. It's under maybe a 15 amp load. go, generator and air conditioner. The uh, water heater has a 1500 watt element in it right there. If I flip that on, it'll load down the generator. Uh, the water heater is also engine coolant uh, uh, heated. So, if the water tank's full and you drive down the highway, you're going to have hot water. It's going to be really hot. Nice and hot, always. So that's pretty nice. That's blowing out cold air. Um, what else is there to show you? There's a little ooh, 350 inverter there. Or whatever that is. Uh, and that's on the coach battery. There's two 12 volt outlets there for maybe a refrigerator or charging stuff. Now the seats are in okay shape. There's a fire hydrant, uh, I mean, steamer, sure. There's room to put two chairs. You can either use the uh, van pedestal or uh, there's a uh, uh, bolts where you can do a large box, which is what was there originally, a large storage box and some chairs. Uh, all the lights work inside. Uh, the ventilator, when you park this, you can just cr crack this open and if you want, you can turn the fan on. An extra hot day. Uh, lots of storage. Oh, this, uh, this covers the whole front window for privacy. That's kind of nice. Although it's just as easy to untie this and just swish that curtain across. That's a nice modification to this one. It, it totally blocks out the front for instant privacy. I have the uh, uh, manual, service manual there. A little leftover oil. I did an oil change on this not too long ago. Actually, last week. Uh, just some miscellaneous parts. curtain on the toilet's nice. You uh, you pull the uh, wall out, it gives you extra space inside, and you just shut the curtain and you have privacy. Nice storage closet. Got a microwave in there for now. Uh, you can add more shelves to it for putting more things in there easier. If I use this to store bed linens and just whatever. Has two overhead bins here and one there. And it has this overhead storage shelf, which is very there useful. Is the docking cable, nice uh, 30 amp quality. I thought I'd show you how to turn off the generator. There's a switch in here that's lit up. And there's a manual transfer switch too. The manual transfer switch, when it's up, that's on the generator, that takes the load off. So now there's no, uh, there's no power to the cabin. And down is shore power. So if you're plugged in, you can uh, switch between shore and generator if, if you wanted to. Now to turn it off, all you do is turn the switch off. It uh, disables the fuel pump and also grounds the uh, ignition.
So not too far away is a highway and then various roads. You can hear the background noise. And we've got a helicopter going overhead. Thought I'd show you how the sound changes. Let's go inside, shut the door. It's quieter now. <laughs> the uh, walls of this camper are. Uh, this isn't working. <laughs> they're pretty thick. They're, they're at least. Uh, Trying to give you something to go by here. Well, it's at least uh, two sheets of three quarters plywood. That's at least what the walls are. All in all, it's a fun camper to uh, take out for the weekend for two. Uh, take lots, lots of uh, luggage along because there's room inside to store it. Or a person could put the chairs back in. Uh, any custom van chairs or whatever you want to do. I use this area for storage. I've got a big old 10 inch uh, Casa Grain telescope and fit right there perfectly. It's beautiful. So I enjoyed this camper. It's nice. This thing is a four-cylinder. It's a Renault four-cylinder, 2.2 liter. Uh, it's like driving a, a big truck in a small camper van. <laughs> uh, it certainly doesn't have super great acceleration, but it does go. It has uh, it attains highway speeds, uh, and supposedly it's the most fuel-efficient design even today. Uh, some people, uh, when their four cylinders die on these things, they uh, put a 3.8 liter American engine in it and they say they even get better gas mileage and the thing drives just so much better at that point in time. So that's an interesting future for this thing. Uh, I suspect if I had that already done, I would probably keep this because uh, at that point I could use it to tow. And um, that's largely why I'm getting rid of it. Uh, I want to be able to tow other trailers, like a camper trailer. Uh, when I go camping, uh, say for instance from Dallas to Austin, to stay at a state park, you have to stay in your spot. You can't reserve a spot. So you're either there or you're not. If you leave, someone else gets your spot. It doesn't matter if you paid. So what you need is, is a leave-behind camper in that situation. And uh, I realize that now, <laughs> and that's what I'm going to end up with once once this thing finds a new home. Uh, I have uh, thoughts on what I'm going to get for that, and then I can go back to Austin more often. So if you'd like to come and see the Atasca Phaser made by Winnebago, <laughs> 1987, uh, let me know.